All right, good morning guys. It's Nick with NK Landscaping. We got another new job as usual. Uh, something a little different, I guess, where it's more like midday than morning. Uh, we already ran two loads of gravel to this site. And we're actually running off to a different job site. The machines are there right now. Uh, we're waiting on some permit stuff to go through with that site. So we're kind of at a stop. We're gonna go pick up those machines from that site and work on this job. So come along as we do that. I'm actually getting some electrical work done in my house today, so that's kind of what held us up this morning. But hooking up the gooseneck and going to get those machines. And just like that, we have the equipment picked up off of this patio job. Like I said, we just got to wait on a uh, permitting. And uh, it's not our permitting, it's the deck contractors. So they can't go any further without uh, permits, or not permits so much. They can't go any farther until the concrete hardens and neither can we, so. On to the real job. All right, good morning, everybody. We're here on site. You can see we got the skid steer and the excavator. And what we're doing is this client got this nice garage built, and uh, they need some access to this garage door, as well as a path to the man door that will connect to the driveway. And then we're gonna connect and wrap around with. Uh, we're basically gonna do a, a new base driveway install with a one and two, one to two inch stone on the bottom and top it with millings. This is recycled concrete. That's gonna get topped with millings as well, just to make this a little less of a crazy transition. Um, and basically this driveway is gonna come up like 15 or 16 feet to uh, allow the boat to be backed in. So you may remember this site if you're a long time viewer. We put a shed basin up there. Uh, that was a little while ago and he got the shed moved. The shed actually used to be right here, so. Uh, yeah, Kurt's getting everything marked out. We're basically gonna dig down to our proposed depth, spread our one to two inch gravel, and top it with millings, all while doing a bunch of compaction in between. Same with this walkway. Uh, and we're raising the grade to meet the level of the drive, uh, garage pad. So, let's get to it. So we're gonna start over here on the side of the house. I'm basically cutting everything out. We're gonna do six inches total of rock. So that's gonna be four inches of the one to two inch stone and then a top coat of a two inch millings layer. So I need to roughly dig down about six inches starting at the driveway there. It's gonna kind of ramp up a little bit since the door is so high off the ground. We don't need to do a whole lot of excavation there. And I'm just gonna cut my edge because part of this job is coming back and installing aluminum edging along all of this rock so it doesn't spill out. But we don't have that product yet, we just ordered it and uh, we had to do some schedule modifications so this job is actually happening a little sooner than we planned, but we'll come back to install that later. So let's start excavating and uh, get this all cut in.
All right, check it out. So we get this whole area, including this driveway ramp section dug out to on average about six inches below finished grade. A big thing I wanted to maintain here that we talked about at our meeting, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see on camera, but from the, draw, from the garage, we actually want to go down first and we're going to meet at the central V. The person that did the contracting work, they dug a trench around here that makes sure everything drains down here. So you have this hill pitching down. We don't want the water going right into the garage. So I tried my best to maintain that. So when we, that's the whole reason for using the ones and twos is that will pass water. So I basically kept that trench. Kurt's now gonna compact this all in place so we have a good solid base. And then we can start spreading our one to two inch gravel. Action is complete. So now Kurt's getting a couple scoops of the one to two inch gravel. I'm going to scoop out of his bucket to get this installed in this four foot walkway. And then we'll, uh, we'll keep working our way back. We'll compact all that. It's going to go nice and easy. It's millings time. So Kurt's given me the contaminated one to two inch millings mix, uh, just so I can kind of spread that in the middle where we've got a little thicker. Uh, otherwise, once he gets through that contamination, it's smooth sailing. This stuff compacted really nice. That's why we use the one to two inch stone. It is very good at bridging even soft soil. In this case, we had some really good soil, so we're fine but it hits like concrete once it's packed. So the millings on top of that, I can't think of a better driveway mix. So let's do it.
I like Millings. Kurt, do you like Millings? Yeah. It's seriously, if you're not doing concrete or pavement, it's probably one of the better stone products. Word on the street is if you wet it down really well and pack it a few times, it turns back into pavement. It's not exactly true, but when you pack it and wet it down, it does like water and it's very thirsty. But when you pack it down, I know we have a little bit of junk mixed in here, but otherwise it's nearly like pavement. It looks like a like a budget paving job, but that's kind of what it is. So it's time for lunch. Mm -hmm. Then we got to finish the front. Kurt's been having a blast spreading out the rest of the millings uh, leading into the garage. These still need to get compacted, but otherwise they look really good. The, the goal was to taper the grade out. He, he didn't mind millings on the driveway. He actually wanted them on the driveway so that we'd taper that grade out. This actually looks really nice. And we'll uh, wet that down and compact it. This little bit is probably gonna end up going uh, on the walkway and in this area, because right now the walkway is actually tipping into the house, into the garage a little bit, but we'll get that cleaned up after lunch and uh, only a couple more things here to do. Well, we're basically done for today. This was one of the areas he wanted us to grade out. So I just raked through that. No seating or strawing on this job. The client wants to do it himself because he said he probably wants to save up a little bit of money at some point and maybe do some topsoil work. So why, uh, why have it seated and strawed now? Extra dirt I had came back here. I was able to pack it down along the side. So we actually built this corner of the driveway up quite a bit to, to open this up almost in line with his regular driveway. It's probably 18 inches of millings here. It's a mix of millings and the ones and twos and then I packed it all in with the dirt. Got this all graded out really nicely. This is that drain swale. So I made sure to excavate that back out again. This didn't get changed here. Raked all the dirt through here so we don't have any extra. And you could see the millings. So four foot walkway here. You have your boat garage entrance, walkway to the man door, filled in this corner, including the utility trench here. Actually, it was a drainage trench, so he wanted that capped with millings. And then this looks so much better. Hopefully it's coming up on camera because of the crazy sun right now, but this used to be like driveway would come out to here, and then this was like a crazy ramp up into the garage. Now it is a nice, even ramp. Super smooth, super easy. Kurt basically spent the whole time that I was moving that pile of dirt, it was back there, and I had to wrap it all the way around, just whacking this thing with the compactor. You walk on this and it literally feels like you're walking on the asphalt here. So I'm super, super pleased with that. And uh, the only thing left is just we, uh, we're gonna come back and put the edging starting here at the driveway and wrapping around this. That's, that is it. So we're gonna get uh, loaded up go home got to do some maintenance on the machine i'll probably bring you back when we finish up that edging maybe tomorrow uh kurt said it might be here so all right good morning guys day two and we are back with a complete different set of trucks and trailers you will see i don't have lights so i might not be able to show you but uh all of our edging that we got apparently has ejected itself from the shelf but I'll have to show you this once I get it out in the light. All right, now that we got some power in here, I wanna show you the edging that we're choosing to use. It's a new brand that we found. We were actually talking to one of the guys at the Northeast Hardscape Expo. It's called Curve Right. And uh, what we like about their product, let me show you. So first of all, we always have trouble with the, the stakes. These stakes have a locking tab, so once they're in place, they lock in, not allowing the stake to pop back out of the ground. Thought that was a cool idea. But what really sold us, this edging has like a, kind of hard to see, but it's got these little curves built into it. Same with the corners. You can kind of see how it's all like curved and bent. Everything locks together, so look at that it locks together so it makes like nearly a seamless transition depending on how you do it i think it locks on both sides maybe uh, we got a quick demo of this at the uh, hardscape edge 
get that in there. There you go. It goes on either side. But you get this seamless transition, nearly. And that's a sturdy bond, because normally the edging doesn't lock together like that. Um, and then the, the long pieces of edging actually do the same thing. So, we saw that at the show. We thought that was really cool. We decided to give it a shot. And after pricing this out, this was like half the price of other competitors' aluminum edging. So we were like, well, this seems like a win-win. So we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna install it here. We're gonna see how easy it installs. It's mainly a pretty straight run with some elevation changes. So we might need to do some funny stuff with that, but let's get to it. All right, first impressions of this stuff. We have it from the edge of the driveway, spaced four feet out from the house, or the garage in this case, coming to an angle here. And that's nice with that 45 connector. The best part about this stuff, and kind of uh, one of the things that sold it to us uh, at the Northeast Hardscape Expo, is all the pieces lock together with those little tabs. And that allows you to adjust your length by uh, almost up to six inches. Um, so at the end, you can scoot it in or out, which is really nice. Um, got as straight as we could, which got a little wiggle to it, but not too bad and Kurt's getting some extra millings from the side of the garage and then uh, we brought some dirt with us but we're gonna do this run take our turn come down so let's get to it totally forgot to tell you how how we're actually installing this set up our string line Kurt goes with the paint gives me a reference mark and I'm actually taking the demo saw and I'm cutting this line now it's, it might sound a little weird but what that's doing is, is creating a nice edge separation so Kurt can take the edging shovel, kick all this excess material out, and we still have a nice straight line. It actually even cuts through some of the large millings chunks or the uh, one to two inch stone down there. So. So with this section, we have a kick and grade right here. So it goes from being a little flatter to a kick uphill. How do you do that with edging that is straight, snaps together straight? So the guy at the show told us if you make a slit at the bottom, you can actually bend this stuff. So we have an uninterrupted top section. And once this is backfilled, you'll never see that. We are cutting this with just a fine wood blade on a circular saw. I tried with the demo saw and it kind of grinds it more, leaves a really nasty burr. This cuts right through it and doesn't even wear out your blade. Um, yeah, you can you can do that cut one of two ways. You can either cut the bottom like we did so you have an uninterrupted top and it looks seamless, or you can cut it from the top down and fold it so that, uh, let's see if I can hold the camera here. Right now we have it so it's like this. <laughs> this is tricky. Or you could do it where the top will actually overlap um, and you'll be left with a seam similar to this. It won't look bad. It's just preference. The guy at the show, you know, told us to do that. That's how he likes to do it. So we're trying that out. One stake there won't pound in because we hit the bedrock. I remember hitting that when we were digging this out. So I'll end up just cutting it uh, with the grinder. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to take a quick lunch and then power through the rest of this. It's actually going really fast. And I'm, I was dreading this. Honestly, I was dreading doing this because I've worked on repairs of other edging aluminum edging and it sucks but this stuff seems to be really good so far so in the corner since these are only overlapped by maybe two inches i'm taking these number 10 by three quarter inch stainless steel sheet metal screws uh, and i'm screwing them together so one here and one here and we're doing that below grade so the screw doesn't stick out and that locks the corner together i don't know what the manufacturer recommends but that's how i like to do it we had two stakes that I had to cut, and I basically, since those locking tabs aren't locking in, I'm screwing those in as well. Otherwise, that is a big chunk of dirt right there. <laughs> it's our yeah. wet, homemade topsoil. It's a little wet today. A little wet today, but I got, actually I gotta cut that one too. That one's, uh, I hit a rock. But otherwise, it looks really good. 
Look at that, I'm really impressed with this product. We're gonna get our topsoil put in. We are not doing any cedar straw. We weren't even supposed to do this topsoil, but figured it was easier to bring our own clean topsoil than to try to work with this rocky junk that we pulled out. But looks really good. Wrapped it right past the gutter here. So we're gonna finish up and uh, we'll be done with this. All right, guys, how does it look? A nice Millings path to, I guess you could call this the Millings boat ramp. Wrap that just around the corner. Put down some extra soil for them. And then, of course, you saw the other day, evening this out so that it's not such an aggressive grade. And then while we're at it, had a little extra millings to spread over here. So we got a little extra ramp into the backyard here, so. I think he's happy. He said he was happy with it before we even edged it, so mm -hmm. not too bad. Thank you guys for watching. As always, videos every single week. And we've got a second channel over at NK Garage if you wanna check Kurt out. Yeah, we got tools every week. Tool hauls, tool reviews and all kinds of stuff like that. Everything, mo mostly hand tools, but some mechanical, uh, pneumatic, electronic, some kind of other tools too. Yeah. Well, I think you're just gonna have to go check it out and see for yourself. The link is down in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on the next one. Have a great rest of the day.